So first up we have small logs. So you'll notice we have three bunks here. Ideally you want three so that it supports the log as it gets lower, so the log doesn't sag. Uh, I'll, I'll be placing a couple of wedges uh, in here, so, so this skid is a little bit lower than the, the, the two external bunks. You can also raise and lower the winch at the far end to kind of align it to center, um, or slide it left and right uh, to, to align horizontally. Ideally with small logs you have them all staged on that side of the machine and you just ha uh, hand roll them in or just use a forklift to bring them in. But the higher the better so you're not having to bend over with small logs. Okay so right here we have a 10 inch or 12 inch log and she goes down to about 9 inches at the other end. So how I would approach this is I would uh, swing the blade into horizontal, come down here empty, and then move across and do a reverse horizontal cut all in one go. So what that'll do is that'll chop off that whole top face in one go. I've removed the riving knives off the blade so that that would allow me to do that, otherwise you're limited to six inch. So in this case I can do a full 12 inch return if it's soft enough timber. So in that first step, that whole top would be gone. And at that point, I would uh, have the choice of either taking a horizontal board here, say four inch or, or six inch horizontally. And after that, I would then just drop it all the way down and produce six inch vertical cuts all the way through here. So on this side of the log, I would uh, nibble away at it. I'd take one two by six, two two by six and then maybe even three two by six and at this point if I carry on moving from here from 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 uh, this uh, you know from the entry side to the exit side the weight's going to move and 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 potentially roll the log so what I want to do is instead of taking these boards away I'm going to switch I'm going to come down vertical and go back vertical come down vertical go back vertical and, and that means I've edged all my vertical boards here where then I can come down again and, and, and slice in and reverse horizontal cut all those boards free. So there's no tendency for that log to roll. And at the very bottom, I'll take another horizontal cut right here. Now it's important to note that you wouldn't do climb cutting with a manual machine. It's only the automated that allows you to do that. Um, so if you're uh, using a manual machine, you'd have to do your vertical cut drive forward, move across, vertical cut, drive forward, move across, vertical cut, whereas the automated machine can zoom forward, reverse, forward, reverse. So it's a lot more efficient. And probably through that gap right there, if you can, just to support the log. So, uh, that was the reverse cut I was mentioning earlier. So you don't have to swing the blade or anything. Uh, in that case, it was a little bit deep, so I brought it back and just did it in two passes. So that's taken off the top of the log. So in this situation, looking back here, I could go down probably another inch, get an inch board here, and then do my series of vertical cuts. So I will do one more one more board right there. So here, we can get a six inch wide board.
All right, so there's our six inch board right there. And what I'll do now, normally when there's a little bit of extra wain at the end here, you swing the blade into horizontal, you come down empty, and then you enter with the back cut and reverse it back to you that way. So you're climb cutting reverse. And what that tends to do is it, is, is it, is it uh, reduces the chances of ejection. So if I start at that end to clear this last little bit of wane, the blade may pick it up here and throw it at that end. So what I do is I come through empty, I enter at this end, and I reverse saw back to the operator. And you'll notice the timber does, it just sits there on the log. I should also note that when you do that, when you return cut here, reverse cutting back towards the uh, operator edge, if you have like um, a little bit of bark on the side here uh, and you overhang that blade too far, the, the blade will actually rise up on that bark. So it's always better to chase the very outside of the log. So it produces all the tension on the very outside rim of your blade and it has less uh, tendency for it to lift up as, as you're moving across. Because uh, what, what swing blade uh, operators will quite uh, often notice is that at the very end, this last cut, there's a little bit of a ridge here, and that's purely because the bark is lifting the blade up as it's returning. So we've done that. Now it's just a case of dropping this down six inches, and uh, I will probably take a couple of boards on this side, maybe two or three, but I won't go too far because if I go too far, that log may tend to roll. So uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do that to that point, and then I'll switch it off, and I'll show you how to do the climb cut situation. And we're going to go down six inches. All right. Oh, before I, before I start, there is one other important little trick here. When you first get into the side of the log here, never start vertical first, finish horizontal. Always start horizontal, finish vertical. That way, the blade will never want to pick up this piece and throw it. So, so uh, always on your entry cut, as you get into the log, start horizontal, finish vertical. At that point, you can drive it down empty and start vertical, finish horizontal, or vice versa. But always, as you enter that side of the log, horizontal first.
All right, so I've done, I've done my two vertical cuts there on this side. Now, if I carry on, especially if it's a, a larger, uh, smooth skin eucalypt type, type log, if I carry on moving across, that log may roll on you, which is really annoying. So, so what you can do is you can now start at the other end and you can go vertical, go back empty, vertical, go back empty, vertical, go back empty, and then come back and then, uh, Actually, I would start at the other end horizontally and cut them all free in one go. And what you'll find with the automated mill, you can actually drive forward in the cut. Wouldn't recommend it with a manual machine, but if you're driving forward in the cut, you'll notice that you won't get chatter. Because you're driving forward, the blade is wanting to push the log into the bunks. Whereas if you're uh, starting vertical from the other side, it's wanting to lift it up. So quite often, uh, the log might vibrate and, and roll. So it's, it's really handy being able to drive forward in the cut with the automated machine. It gets rid of that. So uh, in this case, you know, we're getting pretty light. I know it's going to want to lift if I start that end. So I'm going to bring it back to the operator end, flip it to vertical, and then I'm going to drive forward in the cut. Come back, forward in the cut. Then there's no chance of that log moving. So because I have the border turn uh, installed, this is this little device here, which is pretty handy. It does two things, it pulls the timber back as well as stabilizing the horizontal cut. So option one, I could just come in and then adjust that to roll on this side face here. So that would just plow through while steadying the log as you cut those last boards free. Uh, or if you don't have the border turn, I'll wind it out, send it down empty, and again, like uh, removing the wane, move in at the other end and reverse cut in one clean go. So I'll do that. Now, if I had used a slightly smaller uh, square uh, notch here, say uh, five inches, as I mentioned earlier, this slab would have been a slightly higher and would allow me to get another inch board out of this. Um, whereas we're a little bit low, a little bit deep there, so I'm gonna be uh, cutting into my bunks because of that. But normally, uh, to do that last board, you start horizontal, finish vertical like you normally would, but instead of cutting the horizontal first, I'd move it across and edge your vertical cut. That way, if the log moves, that vertical edge is already edged. Um, and then obviously do your horizontal in maybe two passes. Shallow uh, entry cut and then reverse cut. So yeah, that's how you do small logs. <laughs>